How do you recapture the spark of magic that makes Star Wars one of the most beloved franchises in existence? How do you bring that galaxy far, far away into a modern context without sacrificing the core identity of the Star Wars universe? If you had asked me these questions only a short while ago, I would have told you that it was impossible. And then they released Andor. Andor is perhaps the most important piece of Star Wars media media to have been released since A New Hope came out all the way back in 1977. And the reason why is simpler than you might think. You see, Andor takes the world George Lucas built in the original trilogy, the political undertones of the prequels, and the modern sensibilities of the Disney era films, and combines them into what is some of the best television I've seen in years. I could talk for hours about all the ways this 12 episode Star Wars project is utterly brilliant, but that would go against the spirit of what makes Andor so great. Ultimately, a great deal of the magic of this show comes from the fact that it never fails to be as subtle as it is succinct. There is a hidden depth to everything that happens in this show, and yet every aspect of the storytelling remains clear and concise, and no aspect of Andor encapsulates this more so than the dialogue. So today, let's take a look at some of the best quotes from Andor and unearth the hidden meaning that lies within. Our first quote is from episode 5 of Andor. After revealing to Cassian the seemingly petty reason why Lieutenant Gorn is helping them, Vel simply states that everyone has their own rebellion. This quote perfectly captures the moral ambiguity of each and every character in this show. Unlike in the movies, they there is no clear-cut line between good and evil. Some people do bad things for good reasons, and others do good things for bad reasons. It's impossible for any one person to definitively state that I have the high ground from a moral perspective. Is Cassian, who is only on Aldani for the money, any less valuable of a contributor than, say, Nemec, who is fully on board with the ideology of the Rebellion? Is some Someone like Mon Mothma, who gets to continue living a life of luxury, sacrificing any less than those who are camped out in the dirt. Furthermore, this quote also encapsulates the struggle someone like Luthen faces when attempting to unify all the various rebel cells. Sure, they're all mad at the Empire, but for wildly different reasons. Would it be easier for someone like Saw Gerrera to accept aid from Luthen? Of course, but how can he trust that Luthen's end goal is in alignment with his own. From a literal strategic perspective, they do all have their own rebellion, and that's arguably the thematic core of Andor. Until people realize that they are fighting the same battles as the person next to them, large-scale change can't be achieved. A unified force can change the world, but until we look past the things that seem to divide us, we'll continue to struggle alone. Next, we have a quote from none other than the galaxy's favorite mama's boy, Cyril Karn. At the tail end of episode 2, Cyril confronts the men under his command and timidly explains that there comes a time when the, the risk of doing nothing becomes the greatest risk of all. And ooh boy, is there a lot to unpack here. In a vacuum, this quote makes a valid point. Failing to intervene when there is something wrong being done can often result in that same wrong being done to you. However, in the context of the show, this quote takes on a whole new meaning. See, Cyril as a character is meant to show us how ambiguous the line between justice and oppression can be. He strives to do what is right in the eyes of the law, but most people would argue that the laws he enforces are inherently corrupt. His idea of the right thing to do is dousing people's hope and crushing their spirit. Furthermore, it turns out that the rebellion and the Empire share a lot of the same ideology. The key difference is their end goals. The Rebellion is fighting for freedom, 
whereas the Empire is simply fighting to preserve the Empire. They're both willing to use any means necessary to achieve victory. The thing that defines both sides is what they are fighting for. Cyril's attempt at a cliched speech cleverly shows the audience how language can be manipulated in order to frame corruption as justice. But then how do you know whether something is truly wrong or right? Great question. Why don't we ask our boy Nemec? The scrawny Aldani drops a whole lot of wisdom in his short time on the show. However, his most impactful sentence is simply, The imperial need for control is so desperate because it is so unnatural. Basically, Nemec is pointing out the fact that you know something is unjust when it is solely maintained through enforcement. People naturally seek justice, whether or not the law frames it as such. But corruption takes effort and constant maintenance. It results in a desperate clinging to the status quo, as opposed to progress which happens naturally. It's the difference between telling a child, I'm an adult and I said so, versus actually parenting them. You have to ask yourself, are you trying to help someone or simply maintaining your own authority? Nemec teaches us how to differentiate between the two, which is a large part of why I love his character. However, despite him being responsible for a fundamental portion of the rebel ideology, Nemec is not lucky enough to see his contribution take effect. In fact, very few people in this show are. A character who understands this all too well is Stellan Skarsgård's Luthen. When one of his high-value spies threatens to defect, Luthen launches into a monologue which may very well be the best piece of writing in all of Star Wars. And my favorite line in this monologue is, I burned my life! to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see. Aside from just being a top-notch piece of poetic dialogue, this line also captures the dramatic irony at the center of this show. The audience knows, with a few seldom exceptions, how all of this is going to play out. The rebels win, the Empire falls, and many of the characters, including Cassian himself, won't live to see it happen. A character like Luthen, who is the brains behind this whole operation, can never be the fate of the Rebellion. He won't get a big ceremony like Han, Luke, and Leia, or watch from the background as a force ghost like Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Yoda. Instead, he is resigned to experience the same fate as Cassian and the crew of the Rogue One, to become a hero that no one remembers. The showrunner, Tony Gilroy, loves to make the audience question whether or not the ends justify the means, and this is compounded further by by the question of who will even survive to see the ends they are working towards. Luthen sacrifices his dignity, his morality, and his place in history, all because he has faith that what he is trying to accomplish with the Rebellion is worth it. He uses tactics that resemble what made people resent the Empire in the first place. He sacrifices good men in order to protect the Alliance itself. He goes to such great lengths that he hardly knows who he is anymore. But the one one thing he does know is what he is fighting for, and in Luthen's case, that's all he needs. Speaking of great monologues about sacrifice, it would be easy to highlight any individual portion of Andy Serkis's speech during the prison break, but there's actually a single sentence, made up of only three words, that makes his character Kino so memorable. Having somehow managed to survive the entire escape attempt alongside Cassian, Kino stands on the precipice of freedom, looking out at the vast ocean in front of him, and quietly reveals that there is so much depth in these three hauntingly simple words. Kino knew all along that this is as far as he could possibly go. Everyone sees the ocean as they enter, so he knew that he could never truly escape. But the point is that others could. Even when he was fully complacent with how the prison system was operating, he always looked out for those under his command. He encouraged them to be fast workers, not because he had any 
fondness for the Empire, but rather because he wanted to keep his men out of harm's way. That's even why he discourages Cassian's initial plans for escape. He believes that if they keep their heads down and serve out their sentence without incident, that the Empire will let them go. However, the moment he realizes that nobody is allowed to leave alive, something in him shifts, and he does not hesitate to lead his men to a freedom that he cannot reach himself. In addition to the actual words being said, Andy Serkis's performance speaks volumes. Cassian looks back, confused why Kino isn't jumping, and rather than looking scared or full of regret, there is a visible joy on Kino's face. Sure, this is the end of the line for him, but it's so much further than he ever thought he would get. His final moments were spent standing tall in defiance, rather than bowing down to a corrupt oppressor. As he looks down at the escaped prisoners below, he can rest easy, knowing that he did his job and gave hope to others. Speaking of inspiring hope, Cassian's mother Marva probably sparks the biggest wave of rebellion we see in this first season. Her fierce tenacity and unwavering belief in the rebellion is what gives others on Ferex the courage to finally fight back. But my favorite quote from her isn't about rebellion, and honestly, it's not even about Star Wars, but it is perhaps the most important bit of dialogue spoken throughout the entire show. Having gained enough money from the Aldani heist, Cassian returns home and begs his adoptive mother to come with him, but Marva refuses. Unwittingly inspired by Cassian's actions on Aldani, she is determined to stay on Ferex and fight the Empire. When Cassian pleads with her, pointing out that he'd never be able to stop worrying whether or not she was alright, Marva simply replies, That's just love. Nothing you can do about that. This quote perfectly captures both the theme of the show and what it means to be human. To truly care about something other than yourself is the most vulnerable a person can be. To love someone and feel their struggles and sadness as your own is to let a part of yourself go and never truly be in control. But for that same reason, to love is the greatest possible act of rebellion. Oppression relies on people caring only for themselves. It divides us and makes us feel alone so we can't come together to enact change. But love proves that we are never alone, that a part of us remains with each and every person we care about. When you are open to love, you allow yourself to gain strength from those around you. And with enough of that strength, anything is possible. You see, that's the core message of Andor. Cassian is afraid to support the rebellion because he only trusts himself. Himself. He doesn't know what it means to be a part of something greater, and therefore self-preservation is his number one motivator. But as the words of characters like Marva and Nemec slowly begin to sink in, he realizes that there are more important things to preserve than himself. He allows himself to be part of something greater, and the love he develops for that cause is what turns him into one of the Rebellion's greatest heroes. I'm Dylan, and this has been The Writer's Block.